everyone. As you may know, we have just launched a really, really big revamp and upgrade of our hotspot editor inside 3D Vista VT Pro. The new hotspot editor is no longer what we call a rectangular, but instead allows you to work in a spherical 360 degree view, which is the way that it looks once it is published. And thus it's the same view that your audience will have in the final tour. This is a much more comfortable way of working as it allows us to directly add hotspots as images. So imagine we want to place a piece of art here. We would just import it and with the new 3D axis rotation option, we could adjust it perfectly to the perspective so that it integrates into the scene. Sometimes, however, we also want to integrate images that are not yet projected, but are made acurectangular. So for instance, when you're working in a 3D program. Let me show you an example. So before I was referring to an acurectangular image, and this is what that is. It's essentially an all around 360 degree image, but laid out flat as if you would lay it out on a table. So usually when we work in a 3D program, what we get at the end is an acurectangular image like this one, which is what we need to import into 3D Vista VT Pro. Now imagine we create a render of this entire room for VT Pro, but we also create small renders of just some specific parts or areas in here that we want to use to reflect different design options for this room inside our virtual tour. As you can see in this format here, those elements are slightly deformed because, like we said, they're projected in acurectangular, so laid out flat on a table. If we would take them as they are and import them into VT Pro, they'd appear completely deformed and would not match the underlying spherical panorama at all. That's why we invented a new hotspot type just for that, which allows us to take and import these images just as they are and still have them appear and project correctly in our panoramas. This is obviously thought for virtual staging, so for projects like this, where you can select different options and those options would seamlessly integrate into the panorama and its projection format. Take this floor, for instance. This is a huge hotspot stretching over the entire room's floor. And with the old hotspot type, this would have been impossible to do. It would have been too big to properly display and project. But with the new projected image hotspot type, we can make this a hotspot and have it change through various different images without a problem. Another new concept about this hotspot type is that you can work in groups. So we will import all the different designs of one element, each of which is one hotspot, as a group of hotspots, meaning we place or we position and we work it once and it'll apply to all of the hotspots inside that group. A big time saver. The projected image hotspot is also useful whenever you want to superpose and thus smoothly integrate an element into the panorama scene. So if you go to Photoshop and modify this furniture element, export it and then import it with the projected image hotspot, it will adjust perfectly to our panorama. All right, then let's see where this new tool sits and how you can use it to create such a virtual staging tour. For those of you who are new here, this is 3D Vista Virtual Tour Pro or VT Pro and it is your virtual tour creator. It is a computer program that you download onto your computer which allows you to create unlimited virtual tours locally, so offline on your own device. That means you don't need to work in the cloud or online, which is interesting if you have sensitive material and interiors of houses, companies, etc. We already loaded our panorama, so this is just a render of a room exported as a panorama from any 3D program. If we now go to the subtab Hotspots, you can see on the right hand side a number of icons. These are all the different hotspot types that there are, and for those who have been using 3D Vista for a while, you will see that where before we had our normal image hotspot, we now have a little arrow to drop down more options with the new projected image hotspot. We click it and it'll open the browser for us to select the image we want to import as the actual hotspot. Here we can either select one or several images to import as a group of hotspots. I had these images already prepared. I exported them from Photoshop with transparency. Let me show you how. 
So I took my original image and I cut out every element individually and I exported them as PNG files with transparency. Depending on your individual projects, you might not even have to cut out the elements, but that's up to you. I did cut them out so it's a little bit cleaner when we import it as hotspots on top of our panoramas in VT Pro. Right, back in VT Pro, as I said, we select the three images, so we import and handle the three images as one single group. We click open. And we now click anywhere in the panorama to place those hotspots. When importing these images, you can see that the program automatically calculates the projection or the deformation that these images need to have. So this hotspot type will automatically adopt the same deformation as the underlying panorama so that the elements fit 100% into the panorama, which is a 360 degree image projected spherically around us, if you will. That's why it requires the correct projection. Let's zoom in so we can place it precisely and make it fit. To make this easier, Whenever I keep this hotspot clicked, it'll show with a good amount of transparency so that we can see what's actually underneath and adapt our element to that. So um, we could leave it here as best we can. And then to fine adjust, we can use the arrows of our keyboard. So if we use shift and for instance, the arrow upwards, the hotspot image will move up by 10 pixels. And if we press the arrows without shift, we can actually move pixel by pixel. To see if we placed it exactly on top, we can click and let go to see if it matches. In our case, not quite yet, so we just move and try until we leave it exactly and perfectly on top of the original element inside the panorama. Like so. Here you can see the little circles that you usually use to resize, but if you click it and try to move it to resize, you'll see that that's not possible. And that is a characteristic of this hotspot type. It does not allow resizing or rotation or anything like that because it was invented for this exact purpose, to import prepared images of the exact same size that you're using in your underlying base panorama as well. That just makes it a lot easier to allocate the images because all you need to do is move it, but you don't need to actually change its size or rotation or anything. In fact, if we work with hotspot groups, the program limits us in a sense that the three images that compose this group need to have the exact same sizes to avoid errors. Actually, let's dive a little bit into the groups here. Remember how we selected and imported three images at once? The program understands that this is a group then. What does that mean? That means that even though we only moved and positioned one of these images, we really are already positioning all images inside this group, just that they're not visualized. In order to see one of the other images of the group, we can click here on the little eye icon. And these groups only allow the visualization of one of the images at once, okay? So we cannot have two of the images visible at once. That's simply a characteristic of these groups and of the way that virtual staging works. And it will make things easier for the actions to switch between different designs later. You'll see. By clicking and dragging, we can change the order of the individual elements in this group. And by this color here, we are able to tell that these three belong to the same group. You can change this color here with the arrow to any other color you like. And with the X, we can delete any of the images inside this group. And of course, with the plus, we can add further images to this group. In our case, we are now missing this one. So let's add that back in. And this image will then automatically adopt the same position as the rest of the images inside its group. So it doesn't matter that we edit it subsequently. That's convenient because it allows you to go back into Photoshop and add another new image into the existing group without having to always place it with absolute precision again. So it gives you a lot of freedom when designing your different staging options. 
Keep in mind that when we try to add another image to the group, but that image has different dimensions, the program will tell us that that's not possible. All images inside a group need to have the same dimensions. In this case, we see that the dimensions are 1056 by 466. So any new additional image we would want to add would need to have those same dimensions. Let's add a new hotspot. Let's add these, which belong to this wall. Let's adjust the position. Like I said, sometimes it's easier to do the last little movements with your keyboard. Okay, here is good. So this hotspot is this part here and this one with transparency in between here in the middle. And we can visualize the different images inside the group. And let's leave this one visible. And lastly, let's import our different flooring options, which I have prepared here already with their transparency to not cover any elements in the panorama that are not the floor. Select them all to import them as a group and click to place them. And this takes a second longer to import because it's a bigger image and it's actually four rather than just three. And then we go back in and position it just like we did before. A hotspot of this size covering that much of the panorama would previously not have been possible with the other hotspot type, with the old one. So that's a big improvement that comes with the projected image hotspot, which will have the correct projection even when covering large parts of the spherically displayed panorama. See, now it fits 100%. And if I make the other images visible, we can see how all the flooring options perfectly fit into the scene and change the whole design of the space. Of course, if we preview it, we can see the panorama. And we can swap through the different hotspot images, which in technical terms are displayed on top of our base panorama. But for the user, it simply looks like the floor is changing consistently throughout the room. And that would be the process of how to add this kind of hotspot. One last useful thing is this little lock icon here, which you may have guessed it, locks in the specific hotspot image so that you don't accidentally move it when clicking. So even if you click on it and drag, you won't be able to move it. It is blocked from moving. This makes sense because sometimes we just want to click somewhere to move the view of the panorama. And if we hit a hotspot image, we would then drag and move that image accidentally rather than our view, and that can potentially drive you crazy. So that's a very useful tool. Simply lock your hotspot images after you position them, and you will save yourself a lot of headaches. So once they're all positioned, click the lock icon on them, and you can move around the panorama freely without accidentally moving any hotspot images. All right, now we placed all of the hotspot images, but how can we swap through them? What are the actions that we need to assign to allow our viewers to visualize one or the other material option or hotspot image inside a group? So to show or hide one or the other image. One option is to simply click on the hotspot area to make the next image inside the group visible and to rotate through the different images. Or we could add another hotspot that acts like a menu from which we can select the exact material or hotspot image we want to display. Or we could use a menu button created in the skin of the tour that acts like a configurator of all of the options we have inside the panorama or tour. So flooring, countertops, backsplash and everything combined. Let us begin with the most simple and straightforward one, which is clicking on the hotspot area to rotate through. For that, we go to our first hotspot and tick this box here, 
which we only have when there's a hotspot group and it reads move to next image and group when clicking. So when this is enabled, it will do just what we're looking for and move to the subsequent image in the group when the hotspot area is clicked. So it will hide the first image and show the second one in the group. If the user clicks again, it'll do the same thing and hide the second image and show the third one. And if we get to the last image inside a group, it'll go back to the first one again. So it plays like a loop. This option, if you select it for one of the images inside a group, it is automatically also applied to the rest of the images of that group. Same if we deselect it, it is also deselected for all of the other images inside the group. So again, there's the advantage of groups. You configure and place one image, but it'll be applied to all of the images inside that group. And that's the easiest and fastest way to achieve the virtual staging effect for the visitor. Now, the second option is to establish a slightly more complex system with an animated hotspot that lets us select which of the worktops we want to display. So when the user rolls over this area, it'll show this animation of hotspots that were previously hidden, these three little circles here. And these three circles or hotspots will each have an action assigned, which is the following. Show hide hotspots. We select show. And then we select the hotspot that we want to make appear when that first circle is clicked, which in our case is worktop one. And that's it. Then we do that same thing for the second hotspot, the white circle. Again, show hide hotspot. Click show and select worktop two. It's not necessary to also add a hide action because like we said earlier, you can always only display one of the images inside the group at once. So it basically hides the hotspot image from before automatically when called to show a new one. And we do the same thing for the third and last circle. Show hide hotspot, show and worktop three. And done. Now, when the visitor clicks on this circle or this or this one, it would show the corresponding hotspot image of our worktop here. So this is actually quite easy too. You just work with a set of extra hotspots, which when being clicked, trigger those hotspots that are our images that are overlaid on the worktop for our virtual staging. And the third option would be to control the change through those hotspots with skin elements. So we go to our skin editor or a skin tab inside VT Pro. And I already prepared my design here. So every element here is actually one button. And similarly to before, every button has the action show hide hotspot with show selected and the respective element. This is floor three. This would be floor two. And all the way through the different design options and elements. All you need to know is that every button here essentially has the action to show the hotspot image X. So the hotspot image of its respective material or design. And while we're at it, we're going to take advantage and connect this tool and mechanism with the tag feature existing in VT Pro. If you remember, tags can be assigned to hotspots in our virtual tour to categorize and group certain media or hotspots and then give or call common actions to all those that have a certain tag. This can be super, super powerful in combination with virtual staging. Imagine you have five different rooms and in all of them, you placed these four different flooring options as hotspots. We could then go in and give the floor hotspots in each panorama tags, such as pinewood, oak, beech, and walnut, for instance. We would then select these buttons, and instead of making visible specific hotspots, which we identify by their name here in the list, we'd instead select the tag of the pinewood floor and click Done. Then, whenever the user would click on this button here, it would change the floor to Pinewood in all of the rooms, not just in the one he is currently in. So instead of making one specific hotspot in one panorama visible with this button, you're essentially switching on 
all hotspots throughout the tour that carry this tag. So this would allow us to configure an entire house whenever there's options that all rooms have in common, such as the floor, the wall color, certain decoration options, etc. With the use of tags, we can automate this and give these skin buttons a proper configurator function. Finally, and also in relation to setting up a virtual tour with options, etc., we want to present two other new functions that are useful in virtual staging, but also beyond that, really. And that's this screenshot button here, which, when being clicked, will automatically create and download an image file with the screenshot of the view that we had in that specific moment. And the second one is to share the current configuration with somebody else. To demonstrate this, let's first change the hotspots here a little bit. The floor. What this option does is it copies to our clipboard the tour URL, but not just the general one. It copies the tour URL of this exact tour as you have it configured right now with this specific wall color, floor option, etc. And also with the current panorama and even the current view direction so that you can share this URL with somebody else and be sure that they see the exact, exact same thing as you. So if we paste the URL here with Control V, it's a URL that is a little bit longer because it does contain all of these parameters, but we will see that same panorama in the same direction and with the options and hotspots that we had set up and selected right now. So that's very handy if somebody wants to share a certain setup of a house with their family, or their realtor, or builder, or architect, etc., either to discuss it and to make sure everyone is talking about the same version and options, or even to already order it in a certain combination of options. How do you create these two buttons? Nothing's easier than that. Simply place a button and give it the action Take Screenshot. You leave it in the main viewer so that it takes the screenshot of everything visualized in that main viewer and done. Of course, you can then make it even fancier and add a second option to give the button click a certain sound, like a camera shutter sound or something, to make it even more realistic and entertaining. And the other option for the sharing of a configuration-specific tour URL is an action that existed previously already, which is social sharing. And from the selection of options, we choose copy URL to clipboard. And we select that it should include the deep link, so to the current media. We take the current view, so the current view direction inside the panorama. And the currently visible and shown hotspots, so that the other person will see the same hotspot images, so the same countertop material, the same wall color, floor option, etc. To make sure we're sharing a URL that actually contains the marble countertops, the pine wood floor and the red brick fireplace, for instance. Additionally, and that may also be an option for you, I created this container here, which appears upon clicking the share this configuration button, just as a kind of response to the user so that they know that something did happen when they have the URL copied to their clipboard and that they can paste it wherever they want now. So this is just an additional action that the button has, specifically the action show component, show this container and setting it to automatically disappear after 1.2 seconds. And that's how you'd create this virtual staging example with all its bells and whistles. We hope you like this new hotspot type and these additions to the program, the new level of interactivity and creative freedom that that can give to your audience. We suggest you start playing around with it as it opens completely new use cases for some people and it tremendously facilitates other use cases that you could previously achieve but can do so now in a much more efficient and easy way. Thanks for watching.